Oh, if, we got props. Yeah, if your team won, you you can enjoy me with a victory cigar. Uh, we're, <laughs> you smoke cigars. You're calling Black and Miles cigars. I'll be on now? the miles. I'll be on the miles with that yank hard yesterday, Skip. Shit. I've called the president. President, we need a national guard. We need as many men as you can spare, cause we are killing the Patriots. 30th, 1984, mm -hmm. to one Gloria Jane, she held mm -hmm. him up like. You Wait, that makes him now 37. Hold on, Skip. Let me hold her. Gloria lifted him up like the Lion you King. Can't, you can't do it all the way. I can't do it all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip. She held him up like this here and say, "Behold, doctors, <laughs> this is gonna be the greatest basketball player to ever live." Wait, and, did the three wise men come tonight? And then she saw it back. Let's start with the question. Say you got three Super Bowl rings, a gold Hall of Fame jacket, and an illustrious 14-year NFL career. Is that the peak of your occupational life? It's fair to say yes. I mean, there's probably hundreds of thousands of people who would drop everything to be able to say they've accomplished something of that magnitude. But Shannon Sharp, who we'll be talking about today, takes that notion to the next level to become what I believe to be the best former professional player turned commentator ever. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And my name's Justin, and let's dive into some underdog sports. I'm sure there's a good bit of people who are already incredibly familiar with Sharp's career as a football player, but just so we're all on the same page, we'll be going over it briefly. Taking the seventh round of the 1990 draft, the Savannah State alum would soon grow into an immensely important part of a competitive Broncos team spearheaded by John Elway. He was also part of three Super Bowl teams, of course two being with the Denver Broncos in 1997 and 98, and his final with the fantastic 2000 to 2001 Ravens squad. In that time, Sharp was voted to seven consecutive Pro Bowls from 92 to 98, and four first-team All-Pros. He finished his career totals with 815 receptions for 10,060 yards and 62 touchdowns, which ranked top five all-time among other tight ends. Sharp's legacy was finally cemented on his second go-round of being a semi-finalist when he was selected for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2011. All these numbers give you a good idea of who Shannon Sharp, the football player, really was, although he would soon show his chops in the off-the-field game as one of the most down-to-earth and level-headed TV personalities of our generation. I'm sure there was a lot of questions Sharp had about his future heading into the uncertainty of retirement. He even stated he had no prior interest in being in the talking business, but recounted hearing from reporters he could go into commentating because of his ability to talk while being candid about it. One thing was for sure, whatever career track ended up lucky enough to land the Hall of Famer could guarantee that he would apply the same mentality and work ethic he used for football in his next phase. After a year of mulling, Sharp finally landed a gig as a commentator on the CBS Sports pregame show, The NFL Today as he spoke in segments before, at halftime, and after NFL games. Mostly, this time was great for Sharp as he teamed up with James Brown, Dan Marino, and Boomer Eason, although he would receive some staunch criticisms regarding his southern draw and lisp. As someone with the draw, I feel for Sharp on this, and I also know whoever levied those criticisms likely didn't base it off of his actual commentating ability, and I'll just leave it at that. Unfortunately, sexual harassment claims, which was later withdrawn after notions came to light that Sharp's accuser was actually a semi-stalker, whatever that means, led to him and CBS Sports parting ways. As unbelievable as it may have been then, this departure led to Sharp being in the position he is today as one of the biggest sports commentators in America. Sharp recounts that upon leaving CBS, he knew he wanted a larger platform in his next position. He said that he wanted to talk about more than football, and maybe even more than just sports. This brings us to not only the next phase of the video, but also Sharp's career, as he strived to break the mold set before him. Thankfully, an old friend in Skip Bayless had just the idea for Shannon's next step. On the precipice of the 2016 NFL season, Fox Sports announced the acquisitions of both Sharp and Bayless in order to give them their own daily sports talk show, Skip and Shannon Undisputed. 
For those who maybe don't remember, this was a big deal for both Fox and the co-host at the time. Skip left maybe the most successful sports show at the time to team up with someone who he believed in with Shannon Sharp. And the show would run in the same time slot as Skip's former show, ESPN's first take, at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Skip and Shannon had a shared goal in mind that ESPN's executives neglected to afford, having the ability to talk about subjects important to them without censorship from upstairs. As the date of their first airing neared, Sharp admitted that he was nervous heading into their first show. According to him, Skip told him, I want you to be you. After that, the dynamic duo hit the ground running. However, that's not to say that it was a cakewalk for the dyad, especially for Sharp. He had more of adjustments to make than his counterpart as he had to not only adjust for talking to longer periods, but also an extended selection of topics in sports as well. Starting with sports, Sharp had to transition from just talking about football topics to topics covering basketball and baseball as well. A lot of his shtick and rapport with Skip Bayless came from their natural opposite sports opinions. Examples of this include Skip favoring Jordan while he favors LeBron, Sharp's fight against Skip's cowboy love with his harsh realistic criticism for the team, Skip believing in Baker Mayfield's ability while Sharp doesn't, Skip loves Brady while Shannon admits he's the go but maintains a more level head about the most winningest quarterback of all time, or the one that rings the most true for me, Sharp's appreciation for Stephen Curry's ability while Skip believes KD to not only be the greatest player in the league since 2017 but the sole reason for Curry's legacy as well. I mean, him and Andre Iguodala of course. Shannon began watching the programming on mute, so there wouldn't be any other influences on his statements made on Undisputed the following day. In the end, Sharp thoroughly displayed his ability to talk about each of the three sports. One of my favorite examples of this came just this passing week as Aaron Judge eclipsed 60 home runs in a season. In this clip, you see both of them, and most surprisingly Shannon, talk about certain baseball nuances in history that I would have never imagined the grouping was capable of. Back to Sharp's candidness, I liked his quote on where it comes from. He stated, that's the only way I know how to be. You can tell the truth, but sometimes you can't always be in your face with it. I found a way to tell the truth and put it in a nice, neat package for people to receive it. A lot of times, you have to put it in a nice, neat box with a bow tie and when they open it, it's the truth. I think people respect that. Well, for the social issue hellscape that Sharp and Skip have been placed in since their start in 2016, that candidness would become gravely important as Undisputed started to introduce more and more topics revolving human rights issues into their segments. For Sharp, he said it was as simple as pointing out what people already see. One of Sharp's biggest pet peeves is complacency with ongoing issues. He doesn't see the need to let certain issues revolve themselves, and according to him, the issues will continue to persist if the absence of dialogue remains. Some of the most controversial issues have derived from Kaepernick's decision to kneel, the NBA and NFL's respective handling of the Black Lives Matter movement, to ongoing presence of racism in America, and most recently, Brett Favre's embezzlement of 70 plus million dollars from Mississippi's welfare funds. I definitely think it's fair to say that Skip and Shannon are mutually satisfied with their ability to comment on human rights issues on their current gig, as opposed to their last ones. Their use of those segments was vastly important to erasing the narrative that there should be a divide between sports and politics a la LeBron's feud with Laura Ingram, remembered for a grossly dismissive statement of, quote, shut up and dribble. For Shannon, it's one thing to work hard at your craft and be good at it. It's a whole nother thing to become a cultural icon and synonymous with words like unk, hen dog, black and miles, and Skip! Keep going, JR, Skip! keep going. Additionally, his personable nature and funny moments he brought to Undisputed made him perfect for memes and more than you could probably even imagine has been liked and shared at this point. His fit pics, which we'll touch a little more on later, just became fodder for reactions at a certain point, and social media hasn't looked back since. If you just want an idea of the sheer magnitude behind this, look up on any GIF search engine, Shannon Sharp. I've done the liberty of including some of my favorite examples on the screen, Furthermore, and I'm not sure if this is a result of Sharp's social team or just his understanding of people, but for a man in his 50s, he's incredibly in touch and well-versed with today's culture and what people relate to. 
For Sharp, this shift in sports media culture allowed him to set himself apart from the packs while his candidness and personability began to shine through like never before. While there may have been a number of analysts more knowledgeable than Sharp, you'd be hard pressed to find a single one more entertaining. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. This was a pretty unneeded segment for the purpose of the video, although I feel like to truly tell the story of Shannon Sharp, the TV personality, you need to talk about his friendship and rapport with Skip Bayless. As I mentioned before, these two may be one of the most unlikely dyads on TV today. Their determination to find common ground is what makes them so good. Namely, Shannon was raised poor in rural Georgia and Bayless was born poor in Midwest Oklahoma. Oftentimes, this affects their perspective on the aforementioned and social issues, but it also means both were raised to have incredible work ethics and standards for themselves. Funnily enough, a popular running joke on the show has become their rivaling small-scale competitions that coincide on the daily show. One being their dueling sense of style, as both would tell you that they're the best dressed member of not only the show, but other sports commentators in general. Additionally, their running side bets of, as Skip would say, the breakfast of champions, diet Mountain Dew, placed on the outcomes of games, as well as individual team and player props, has become a staple in and of itself. If you haven't gotten it already, let me round this all up. Sharp is currently one of the powerhouses in sports media for three reasons essentially. His personability and comedic timing, his rapport with co-host Skip Bayless, and his candidness about serious social issues. There were a number of times Sharp's staunchest critics may have counted him out. His release from the Broncos, criticism for his speaking ability, or his controversial departure from CBS Sports in 2014. Although, time and time again, Sharp's unrivaled work ethic prevailed, culminating in the sports TV superstar he is today. He says it's also the reason he can outlive 20 and 30 year olds at the ripe age of 54. I would say now, undoubtedly, Sharp has maximized his potential for his work life, but by this point, I know not to cut Unk out. So what do you guys think about Sharp's incredibly unique career arc and his current position at the top of the sports media mountain? Maybe you're a part of the minority that doesn't really care for Sharp's takes and feel free to let me know why down below. My favorite part of these videos is the dialogue we have in the comments, so comment down below and let me know and this video has been made by Underdog. Peace.